everybody welcome back to the channel i'm really glad you're here we get to spend some time together now in today's video i am going to be going over week number four of a marathon training program now this is the fourth week of a 16 week program as i prepare to run the boston marathon just in case you're brand new here and if you're uh, already a subscriber or someone who watches the channel i do want to say thanks to everyone who took the time to comment on previous videos. I greatly appreciate it. It's always fun to keep the conversation going. Just helps make the channel a little bit more dynamic as we share with one another. And I do want to wish those that are maybe training for your own race, whatever race that might be, good luck with your training. And I also want to say, you know, good luck and speedy recovery to those who are injured. Unfortunately, you know, I've read a few comments where people are um, suffering from some injuries that they're recovering from. And I want to wish you a speedy recovery. I'm sending you some good vibes there. Okay, so now for week number four, it's really hard to believe they're already a quarter of the way through this training block. It doesn't seem like it, just how quickly time goes by. But for this week, I ran five different times um, and for a total of just a little over 42 miles, which is pretty much on par with, with what I was doing the last time that I ran this program. But to go into some more detail, I'm going to look over at my computer screen, go to connect.garmin.com, and I'm going to start by going and looking at the overall training plan for the week so we can see all the different things that were scheduled for this week. So I'm going to look away at my computer for uh, a couple of minutes, so I'm not trying to be rude, but here we go. Okay, so again, I'm at connect.garmin.com, and I'm going to scroll all the way over to the left-hand side, and this time I'm going to go down to training and planning, and then I'm going to go down to training plans. Now what's going to happen is because today is the first day for week number five, I need to click back on week number four, and I'm going to scroll down just a little bit so we can see the full week. So here you can see that you know I had, uh, like I said, five different runs that were scheduled this week. Uh, it started the week started on January 17th, and the first day was doing some yoga, uh, which I did do. In fact, I had seven different yoga sessions all together, and we'll take a look at that here in a minute. Uh, and then the first run for that week was doing some intervals, and then I did a recovery run. And then cross training on the 19th, which was also part of that recovery run. So this is something I do want to point out, because if you start to follow the Garmin program, uh, one of the things that I love about it is that it uploads those workouts to my smartphone through the app and then directly to my watch. But what it doesn't do is to upload the other things that aren't run related. So the things like doing uh, cross training that's not loaded up. So you're going to need to take a look at the whole calendar week to make sure that you don't miss a scheduled cross training session. And that'll be especially important for me next week because I have two, I think two of them scheduled for next week. Uh, but then, so we had cross training, then we did a fartlek run, we had a, a complete rest day, ran some intervals, and did a long run. So if we kind of take a look back at the global view of things. Of those five different workouts, three of them were speed related. So some three speed days, had a, one recovery run, and then one long run. Okay, so let's take a closer look at each one of those. I'm gonna, to do that, I'm gonna scroll over here, and I'm gonna go to where it says activities, and then I'm gonna click on all activities, which does bring up everything that I did. Of course, this day started, or this week started on January 17th, and you can see I did do some yoga that was uh, recorded there. Also, yoga for each of the uh, following days as well. So again, uh, seven different yoga sessions, as I mentioned, two strength sessions. So I did a little better this week than I did last week when I only did one of those. So now I'm going to click on the little running guy up here so we look at just the run activities. And to do that, I'm gonna scroll over here. So because the week started on the 17th, the first run activity was, a, it was some intervals on the 18th. So let's open that up and see what that looks like. Oh, and this week, let's see, of those five different uh, running workouts that I did, I think I ran in four different shoes. So I had a lot of variety this week in the, in the shoes that I chose to run in. Um, and I'm gonna scroll down here and get down to the bottom where we can see all of the data in a little bit easier form, I think. Uh, up here at the top, it says 7.29 miles. That was the total length of the workout. It had a primary benefit of VO2 max, and that's something that is really, I've really been paying close attention to because I, I do feel like my overall general physical fitness isn't where I really want it to be at this point. So I think Bella agrees that uh, my overall physical fitness could use a little work. 
it was uh it was challenging today you know i did try to push it the best that i could uh, and still try to feel safe out there it was a little slippery it had some pretty tight corners at times although it's pretty much on par with where i was the last training schedule but my expectation was because i was just coming off of a pretty successful training uh, as i had prepared for the detroit marathon that i might be a little further ahead than that but right now i just seem to be pretty much on par with what i did before so not terribly bad but you know um, just something I'm paying attention to. And then uh, for my heart rate, 152 beats per minute on average here. Uh, just a little over 56 minutes total time. Let's see, average pace, 742 minutes per mile. The best pace was a 613. Uh, run dynamics, 183 steps per minute. Max cadence of 200 steps per minute. Uh, let's see, the length of my stride was 1.14 meters altogether. And then this is interesting because I started wearing a new heart rate monitor. It measures this vertical oscillation, um, which is kind of interesting to look at. And that's basically how much time I spend on my uh, ground contact with my left foot and my right foot. And while it wasn't exactly 50-50, it wasn't that far off. Uh, but what was interesting is that, you know, because I'm now, and I'm now aware that that, that data is being collected, I'm a little bit more aware of that when I'm running and trying to make sure that you know I'm staying a little bit more even in my cadence from my left to my right foot. I'll scroll back up here because I wanted to click on intervals up right next to stats because this was doing a little bit of speed work. And here you can see that uh, for the first interval, and these were here eight minutes and 6.52 minute pace. And then the second one was 6.47. And then the third one was 6.49. So, Oh, we're not too shabby. I'll take that. And oh, and I was running, however, in a super shoe. I was running in the Nike uh, Alpha Fly uh, shoe for that for those intervals. Okay, so let's back up here, and we'll go from intervals to recovery run. Uh, let's click on that, and that I did just around. Let's see, Lake Ovid. It looks like is where I did that one. For some reason, I was thinking I was closer to home. Oh, I was running in the uh, Hoka Speedboat Fives for for that workout. Went just a just a little over four miles. Again, a recovery run. It did say that it has a tempo uh, effect in terms of primary impact. You can see that my heart rate was down a little bit. It's not in the 130s, but it was 146. And out on the trails where I was running, that's not terrible. With a max heart rate of 155, just about 40 minutes, and a 9:39 minute mile pace. Again, a recovery run, so that's fine. I'm, I'm, I'm good with that. 180 steps per minute, 196 steps, steps per minute in terms of the max. So that was my recovery run. Had a lot of fun. Okay, so I'm going to click back here, and we're going to try to keep moving because we have five different runs to look at. And then on the 20th, I ran Fartlick Run. That was a lot of fun to do. I did that around town, uh, I think mainly because uh, of time. I it didn't have as much time that day as I would have liked to have had to get out to the park. I went a little over seven miles, had a threshold training effect like that, 155 uh, beats per minute for my heart rate. You know, it's still a little bit high, but we're early in the training. I expect that that's going to be coming down as the weeks uh, go by. And 755 minute mile pace on average. And then um, I'm going to scroll up here, 186 steps per minute, 196 96 steps per minute maximum. Uh, okay, so I'm going to go now to the 22nd, where I ran some intervals. Now, I did those around town here, and, um, you know, it was a bit of a challenging day just because of the weather, and that day wasn't the best. I got one more to go. I think that two minutes recovery time in between the intervals is the fastest two minutes on the planet. Oh, goodness. Well, I know my pace isn't all that great today, but we're out here getting it done. Even with a little bit of snow and ice. That's all we can ask for some days. All right. Whew. <clears throat> Let's go all the way down here to stats. Went a little over seven miles. VO2 max. Still working on that. Uh, hopefully going to be improving over time here. 157 uh, beats per minute for my heart rate and 758 minute mile pace uh, on average. And then up here, 185 steps per minute 
for an average run cadence and then 201 steps per minute. But here I am going to click on intervals. And let's see, uh, 717 uh, average pace there, another 717, so pretty consistent. And then a 725. And I was running 10 minute mile um, intervals with two minute recovery time. Okay, so now let's go to the long run. Uh, take a second for it to pop up here. Uh, went but just a little over 16 and a half miles. I was again wearing a Tecton X, Hoka Tecton X trail shoe, even though I was running around town here because of the icy roads. Uh, let's see, we already looked at that. Tempo effect is the training effect. Uh, highly impacting my um, in terms of the primary benefit up here. 150 beats per minute for heart rate on average with a max of 159. You know, that's not terrible. And then let's see for the overall 850 minute mile average pace. And my best pace was 742. So at one point I was moving at right around my marathon pace, but for the most part, and it was going a little bit slower than that. 179 steps per minute average cadence, 191 steps per minute max cadence. Okay, so that is it for the week in review of the different workouts that I completed for week number four. Hope you guys can join me again for the next video for the summary. I do post other videos in between here, but each week I, I uh, go back and I summarize the week worth of workouts. So week number five, um, I think I'll be running just four times for week five because that's just how the plan is designed. This week was five, which means my mileage was up just a little bit over last week. So I ran 42 miles this week, I think 30, 31 miles last week. This coming week, I'll also be running 30, 30, 30 to 31 miles as well. Uh, but I'll also have some additional cross training uh, built into next week's uh, plan. So, all right. Hey, thanks for making it to the end of today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it for you. As always, run tall, run strong, be kind to one another. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time right here on Run Tall with Tim.